It appears U.S. lawmakers will vote next week on the controversial Keystone XL pipeline. If approved by President Barack Obama, the pipeline would carry crude oil from Canada to the U.S. Gulf Coast. It's a plan that some landowners in the U.S. state of Nebraska, along with environmentalists and indigenous rights advocates, continue to fight. CCTV's Hendrik Sabrandi was in Nebraska recently and filed this report. Here in America's heartland, agriculture is the way to make money, and it's also a way of life. But the subject of oil is never far from a farmer's mind. I was looking over at my big diesel tank. That's got to be full every spring. You know, energy security is important to agriculture. But for some who live in the state of Nebraska, life and oil, which already flows here, simply do not mix. It's been an ordeal. We never dreamed that we would be having a oil pipeline coming through our property. Change anything. Susan Donovan is one of a room full of Nebraskans who came together recently, just days after their state Supreme Court upheld the proposed route for the Keystone XL pipeline. The pipeline, which would run right through Nebraska, is a project Donovan and some of her neighbors have fought for years using this basic argument. Should a private corporation that's in a foreign country be able to condemn Americans' property with eminent domain. It just does not make sense at all. This is not a school, this is not a highway. I just think it's wrong. The energy company TransCanada says the 1,179-mile pipeline would carry 830,000 barrels a day of heavy crude oil from Alberta, Canada to the Gulf Coast of the U.S. via Steel City, Nebraska, a tiny community through which other, smaller pipelines pass now. Supporters of the project say it would provide much-needed jobs to towns like Steel City and give large stretches of the central U.S. a major economic shot in the arm. We've got all of those resources underneath our ground right now. We might as well be using them instead of, instead of fighting it. Pipeline opponents say its economic benefits have been vastly exaggerated and its impact on the environment underplayed. They worry about future underground leaks and spills. I think it's reckless, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that there's a lot of environmental question marks. I think there's a lot of moral uh, question marks, too. It essentially... Roughly 90 landowners like Donovan have now been ordered by TransCanada to make their properties available for the XL pipeline. It would mean that each person who receives a condemnation notice would then be subject to the court's powers of eminent domain. Those landowners continue to fight back in court. Ultimately, the pipeline's future hinges on the president's approval. All it takes, its supporters say, is... Mr. Obama to sign the piece of paper and get it over with and quit stalling. Be done with it. I think the real obstacle is in Washington, D.C. But the struggle goes on in Nebraska six and a half years after Keystone XL was first proposed. Hendrick Sabrandi, CCTV, Steel City, Nebraska.